Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul here at Radio Free Hammer Hall, and today we are going to be talking more about Cities of Sigmar. In particular, getting started in this army for folks that didn't have a pre-existing force. So, what I really want to start with here is definitely buy this book first before you start trying to build an army. This is a really big book, guys. It's more than 50 war scrolls. There's seven different cities, so it's almost like seven different books. There's all kinds of different ways to build this army. So you really want to familiarize yourself with what is available to you and figure out a game plan before you just go out and start buying models. And even if you already have an existing army, this book is complicated to try and build with. So you got to buckle up, folks, because this is complicated. I'm going to be doing a big series of videos on this, but this one should just sort of get you started on how to think about this book and what is inside. Now, I am not going to be talking about any of the modeling hobby aspects of this army or this book. There's a lot of awesome stuff that you can do with this. You can devote an entire video series just to converting different modeling all the different things painting to do with this army that has nothing to do with the actual play of it my concern here is really about building your army building a competitive force or at least one where you know you're you're not just throwing together models you like. You're putting together something in a thoughtful way and you want to go out and you're you're more interested in winning the game than just having a cool looking army. Rule of cool is always awesome. You know, have your fun the way you want to have it. But this particular video and series of videos is really about the play of the army, not the appearance of the army and i just want to really kind of get that clear up front um because i know there's a lot out there and uh, i'm your guy for building the army there's a lot of other great channels out there that can help you more with the hobby aspect so there's two main approaches to building this army that i can sort of see when you're starting from nothing you can choose a city and build out from that city, figuring out what that city is going to do for you, how it works, what model kits you're going to need to build it out, what its strengths and weaknesses are, figuring out different synergies, and for some of them as well, building out from the battalions also is pretty effective. The other option is to build out from a faction or from a race or from sort of like the basis of one of the uh, pre-Age of Sigmar armies that are the origin of the factions in this book. So when you're doing that, you can sort of build a force that's well-rounded within that faction or within that you know concept of races or you know whatever sort of thing you're working on there and find the city that fits that best and work in that sort of direction this way you're looking more at the internal synergies of a faction rather than building from the city and finding the synergies with the city itself so there are some key concepts that you really need to think about here when you are building out your force and sort of how you want to uh, 
plan out what you're doing. There are some things that are have really unique abilities. Just um, a couple of good examples. The uh, sorceress, for example, she can sacrifice one of her guys to get plus two to cast. That's a pretty unique ability. And that is really powerful. You have something like Demigriff Knights, where there's nothing really quite like Demigriff Knights. It played in Hammer Hall with the battalion. Like, nothing else in this book is anywhere near what that can do. So looking at the uniqueness of what you have available to you, those things are the standouts, the very strong things, the unusual things that are going to individually shine in an army and don't really need anything else. Another concept to think of is best in breed. There's a lot of units in this book that do very similar things. Your great swords and your Phoenix Guard and your uh, Hammerers, there's and more, they're all basically the same basic unit with things that are a little bit different. The points are a little bit different. You know, this one has a different save, this one has this other special ability, or it does mortal wounds, or it gets uh, extra hits against monsters. There's a process that you have to go through. And this book is pretty well balanced. So your best in breed selection is not about doing really granular math hammer and figuring out which one of those units in a particular class is best. It's figuring out which one suits the needs of your situation. You know, if you're looking at your basic fill up the body or fill up the board battle line kind of guys you know you have your free guild guard they're your cheapest option they're 80 points and you can get guys that are 10 bodies for 80 points and a four up save like that's pretty solid then you can go and get in the same sort of class you can get long beards that'll have a three up save in melee so there's differences there like it's you're going with a higher quality of something rather than the thing that it's best defining characteristic is it's inexpensive for the number of bodies the next thing that we definitely always should be thinking about is power pairs and sometimes it's power trios or something along those lines but you're looking at very frequently a unit and a hero that go together and create a really powerful synergy and they're a force multiplier so very simple example a free guild general on a griffin and demi griffs the free guild general on a griffin his command ability buffs charges it buffs to hit so those two things together are going to make your demigriffs that much more powerful when they charge. So there's lots of little things in here. Um, a uh, runesmith can give extra rend to uh, your iron drakes really powerful like there's not anything else that really can do that in the army like just belching out rend two shots so pairing up those heroes with other units that they synergize really well with that is a sort of thing that you really want to be looking for when you're building particularly if you're not going all in on a faction you're often going to want to pair a hero and a unit or two that are working together to be more powerful in your force and ach and achieve a particular objective then you have your linear synergies 
that are just what comes out of working within a faction. You know, your command abilities that just work on everything in your faction. Like the, the sorceress command ability that uh, lets guys run in charge. And that works well for any of your units that are in Darkling Covens. So there are a lot of those synergies that it just it buffs everything in a particular faction or it works well together with everything in a faction it's not necessarily a power pair specifically but you have a hero or some other ability that is just working well with a large number of things in your army and you'll see here off to the left, I sort of kind of highlighted for you here the like where your focus on these various different things is going to be. I think things that are more unique and the best in breed sort of concepts, those work much better if you're building from the city first. And then linear synergies and power pairs work a little bit better if you're building from the faction first. And it kind of, I think, is in this order, roughly, like kind of on the spectrum from building from city to building from faction. So just a quick tour of what these different cities do. I'm going to be doing videos on uh, hopefully eventually all of these going through what each city really does, how to build with it, and what they're good at. But here is just sort of the 10 cent tour of the cities. Hammer Hall, it has a tremendous command point engine. You can produce tons of command points with Hammer Hall. You're also immune to ba battle shock in your own territory, so it is very good on defense. And then you have a command ability for your army that lets you pile in an extra time when you're in enemy territory. So it's an army that really sort of rewards what you want to do anyway. Most armies really like command points. Most armies don't want to take battle shock, and it's more important to do that in your own territory. You want to be more offensive. Hammer Hall is very much win more for things that you're already doing. The Living City has uh, a very strong ability to ambush with units, have them uh, initially deploy off of the board, come in six inches off the board edge, nine inches from enemy models, and uh, you know, enter the board that way rather than a traditional deployment. It also has a command ability to make a normal move after shooting. So that can pair well with the ambushing abilities um any other big thing in living city is that you can use uh sylvaneth one in four of your units can be a sylvaneth unit gray water fastness all about your artillery war machines and shooting this is your traditional gun line army everything in this force just builds around Let's shoot the crap out of our opponent. The Phoenicium. This is just all around the Phoenixes. You build from the Phoenixes. And everything in this army is really about making the Phoenixes more durable. So you have these big, durable, hard-to-kill monsters that are healing, that are coming back from the dead that are fighting as they die, all of those sorts of things, that is what the Phoenicium is good at. Anvil Guard, honestly, like, I really kind of struggle with Anvil Guard and what its role is. The big things that I can really kind of tell here are that it, it's all about monsters, both having your own monsters and hunting your opponent's monsters. Those are the really big things, and it has a solid ability to uh, minimize your losses from Battle Shock. Hallow Heart, all about the magic. It is totally oriented around just building a powerful magic oriented army. It makes all of your wizards double casters, it gives you additional casting buffs. It 
has a battalion that is all about wizards. It has a double size spell lore and great spells to work with. It's everything you want if you want to build a city around magic. And finally, Tempest Psy. Uh, this is basically like win more in the first turn. You can get extra movement in the first turn and plus one save in the first turn. So you're very uh, strong either alpha striking your opponent or if your opponent is going to get the jump on you, you have additional abilities to kind of alpha block them and keep them out. Uh, they have moving and shooting shenanigans that they can do, and this is the city where you can bring in your Karadran overlords for one in four units. So other key things to think about here, the big factions and what they do. Uh, the Free Guild is, they, they just kind of have a little bit of everything. Um, you have good shooting, good melee, good cavalry, good light cavalry. You have your griffin that has uh, very powerful offense and defense and a good command ability. It, it's just sort of a very good all-around force. I think out of all of the factions that went into this book, the free guild really, I think, came out the best out of all of them. Darkling Coven, I think, kind of come in second here. Um, they have a very powerful ability to run and shoot or run and charge. They have a lot of hard-hitting heavy infantry. Dispossessed, they're very slow, but they have very strong armor. They are resistant to battle shock. They hit hard. They have powerful shooting, powerful melee, but they are very slow. Your other important factions... Uh, Collegiate Arcane, this is basically where all of your wizards are, and uh, not much else really in Collegiate Arcane, but that is, particularly if you're going to be building like Hallow Heart, you're really going to be interested in Collegiate Arcane. Iron Weld Arsenal, that's where all of your more machines and artillery are, and that is very much lined up with Greywater Fastness. The Phoenix Temple is your Phoenixes and your Phoenix Guard, so definitely important to think about with Phoenicium. And I just wanted to throw in Wanderers here as well. Like They are one of the other major factions that got lumped into this book, um, but they got really pretty gutted, and they're not that coherent together as a force, but... Uh, Sisters of the Watch are definitely really good, so definitely wanted to note that in here. And some final notes on optimizing your build. I really think you need to approach whatever style of build you're working on in a sort of holistic way that you kind of have to ba bounce back and forth between you know the city and the faction, the units that you're selecting. You can kind of start with a basic idea, but you're going to kind of bounce back and forth and look at everything from all the different angles that you can. You know, sometimes you can start building something and it looks right for one particular city, and then you kind of end up somewhere else with it. Some of the cities, or I would say all of the cities, are they're way more than just their battle traits. You know, you have your command traits, your artifacts, your spells that really add a lot of flavor to the cities, and they really make for I'd say there's some things hidden in there that's not the obvious battle traits that really move certain cities strongly in certain directions. Uh, don't forget also that you can take Stormcast for one in four of your units. In the Living City, you can do the same with Sylvaneth, and in Tempest Eye, you can do the same with Karadran Overlords very powerful. This dramatically expands the model range that you have access to and the number of war scrolls that you have access to. So, I mean, all together, 
you're probably looking at somewhere on the order of like 150 war scrolls between cities of sigmar stormcast sylvaneth and caradron overlords plus you can ally in everything else out of order except for seraphon so you have a lot of things that you can fit in here and the big thing that I want to stress to everyone is to avoid your anchoring biases. This is really something for those experienced players that have some experience with what these armies were before they got lumped together into Cities of Sigmar. All of this really needs a fresh look. Because so much in this book changed from what the War Scrolls and Allegiance abilities were previously. So you, it's very easy to get anchored in with like how an army is going to play. And, you know, just using Free Guild as an example, like Free Guild was, when it was its own faction, was all about like tons of infantry and using them in the these like trios of units and moving tons of infantry around the board. And now like, you know, your demigriffs are way powered up and outriders and pistoliers are much better than they used to be. So you have a lot more options for free guild than you used to. And you don't necessarily have all of those buffs for the infantry that you used to have. So when you're kind of going into building an army with free guild, you know, it, it, it's easy to kind of fall into that trap of like, okay, I need these big blocks of like 40 uh, free guild guard. Uh, well, maybe you don't necessarily need that anymore because things are different now. So definitely try and avoid those biases from what your prior experience with this is totally new book everything got rewritten everything is new everything is fresh so give it a fresh look and try not to get too attached to those older ideas so that's it for now everybody thank you so much for watching as always if you enjoyed the video give it a like and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on notification alerts to get uh, all of our new videos as soon as they come out. And if you really like us, support us on Patreon to help us improve the channel. Our link's down in the description. 100% of the proceeds from our Patreon go towards improving the channel. So any contributions that you provide us on Patreon are really investments back in the content that you are going to be getting. So again, thank you very much. More to come, and we'll see you all later.